Hello, Good Life Travelers. Welcome to another episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. We've got the full crew. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. As you can tell, we uh, Christmas has arrived yeah. in our beautiful set here and all over Tamara's house. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it exploded. The right? little Christmas fairy came and did <laughs> threw up all, all over the place. <laughs> Thank God for that Christmas help. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't get done. Well, I think it's very festive for our little holiday episodes that we've got going yeah, on here. I agree. And uh, so, again, uh, you've got your all-inclusives domestic expert Chrissy at the end there. You've got our Europe luxury fit, all that good stuff, Tamara. <laughs> and then uh, cruising, the best way to travel oh expert. Oh, my money. God. So, eat a dead horse, why don't you? It wouldn't be a it's horse. A it's a ship. <laughs> it's a ship. It's a great ship, but not the best. Be the sinking ship. <laughs> I kind of like that. Right? Although ships don't sink. They're very yeah, safe no, and great ways to travel. Well, you hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Christy's had a lot of Kool-Aid this morning, so... Like, I'm uh, water and it's a whole thing. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of been a crazy morning. We're really yes. super busy yes. right now. It's a busy booking time. Yeah, it, it really is. Yeah. A lot of last minute bookings. People must be listening to our travel talks about Christmas gifts. Well, you know, it's not just an Emmy award winning show. No. Okay? No, no. We do have useful no. information. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I'm excited everybody's out traveling, wanting to travel. Yeah. That's yeah, we great. were looking at the next few months and we're slammed with people. Lots yeah. of clients going all over the Fun place. places, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little jealous, I think, right? Yeah. You know, we like to go. Oh, we get our fair share. Yeah. Yeah, I ran into someone uh, last night at the haircutting place and, um, they said, "Where? How do you keep track of Tamara? Where she's always going?" I said, "I don't, because she doesn't put it on the calendar, oh, so I never know. Where, <laughs> I don't know where she's she at." She does not use Google Calendar. That's a I'm show. very bad. <laughs> I just hope we don't have to sign any checks, or else we'd be in we trouble. Come in here, all the lights are off. We're like, oh, didn't see it on the calendar. And you Where's the dog? Have much room to talk. <laughs> all right, let's refocus, ladies. Okay. All right, how about so that? Out of the three of us, I'm the good, responsible one. <laughs> Cricket, okay. cricket. <laughs> I didn't even know how to go it's respond not that to that one. Don't watch it, <laughs> so Tamara, you wanted to go? Is that what you're <laughs> no. I want her to get out and see more of the world. We even tried to take her. Please. It's true, we did try. Yeah. That's a whole nother episode. Yeah. So let's yeah. refocus that again. That might require a, a shrimp. <laughs> and Kool-Aid. And Kool-Aid with vodka. And alcohol. All right. So uh, actually speaking of that, Brett Snow just came on. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect time. <laughs> you must have known we were talking about Tito's and Kool-Aid. Right, right. Another fun night at uh, the snow house. Right. <laughs> so let's refocus. Uh, so now uh, a topic that we've talked about before a number of times, and I think there's always so much more we, ex we can expand on it, is did you know? Because a lot of people uh, don't know, right? So they don't know right. that travel ex agents exist still, that we book, right. that we have a service. They don't know the extent of travels that you can do because a lot of people right. just think, you just go to Myrtle Beach or you just go to all-inclusive and that's it. You know, there's so many options. Not those, those are both are... five things, but okay, whatever. <laughs> I didn't mean to discount. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's no, no intention there. Okay. So uh, so there's a lot of things. That's why we talk about it in a number of episodes. And today we have a, uh, an interesting pack episode of Did You Know Items, right, ladies? Yep, yeah, right. Guess and it right. actually ties in perfectly to what I have planned for our small talk today, nice. ladies. Okay. Almost like it's I had this nervous. plan. No, no, there's no, no trivia. Okay. No trivia. I will point out that I was at a family get-together, and some of my family was a little surprised that Chrissy knew as many answers on the last question. I, I think you guys cheated. I did not. Okay. I did not. I did not. Really so whether know. she peeked at the copier. I did not. I swear. My family did not believe that. So, oh, okay. Come on, Remelise. What are you doing to me? <laughs> all right. Back. So, all right. Forbes recently published the top 24 places to travel in 2024. Now, these are not going to be your usual destinations because it's all about off the beaten path, which okay. Tamara, that's, that's all about you. You love mm -hmm. off the beaten path stuff. So these are not going to be the Romes um, or the Cancuns or regular Caribbean cruise. These are going to be exotic locations, many of which cruises do visit, but that are that are that are different places. So if you don't want to go where all the crowds are going to be, you want to go somewhere unique that's going to be immersive, fun, um, a great experience. So this is right up your alley. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, so this is guess? no. We don't have that much time. So uh, Forbes worked with Ovation Network, and, and they said next year people will be looking for a deeper, more experiential connection with the destinations that are off the beaten path. So that's what this is. And we're not going to go through all 24 because we don't have enough time. Number one option, Tamara, you, this might Malta. be Malta. Is, Mal is it Malta? No. Sardinia, Italy. Oh, on the okay. coast there. I think there's a lot of places on the coast of Italy 
that are gorgeous. West and mm -hmm. East Coast that are not touristy. It's not mm -hmm. just the Amalfi Coast, which everyone wants to see in, which is gorgeous, but there's mm -hmm. so many other areas, right? Is that yeah. where sardines come from? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Wow. That's a very deep question. <laughs> I, know. Chrissy, Chrissy I wasn't ready question. for that. Just Let's, I want to look it up. Just saying. It might. Well, it is a big culinary aficionados, big place for him. <laughs> Japan's huge, huge ships sailing out, land tours filling yeah. up. Uh, this is for all the skiers out there. Did you ever think about skiing over in Japan? No. Oh, yeah. Nasiko, Japan. Huge. One of the best places to ski in the world. Off the beaten path people don't even know about. See? Did you know? That's number three. Now, I fell in love with South Korea when I was there. And um, we were in... Uh, I forget which one we're at. B and the B. I'm losing my mind. Uh, this is Jeju, South Korea. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, not too far from Seoul, right? Uh, act for active travelers. If you're looking for adventures. So surfing, hiking, ge geology enthusiasts. Chrissy, that's right up your alley, right? Geography, not geology. Geology is the study of rocks. Oh, <laughs> she's not fired today. No, I, I really got, I feel like I got to stick up for myself here. <laughs> All right, Mongolia. Is that on anyone's? Ooh, Mongolia? Mongolia. I'm thinking of the Mongolian <laughs> buffet, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's Mongolian. I don't know. I don't know much about Mongolia. You know anything about Mongolia? I don't have a lot of requests for Mongolia, nor do I see a lot of like info out there about it, but... Polo it... enthusiasts. This would be there where they need to go. It's a big place for... Wild horses, lots of things on wild horses and stuff. Okay. Looks beautiful, okay. Oaxaca, Oaxaca. Oaxaca, Mexico. It's a world heritage site. Good for uh, food, archaeology, nature, spiritual energy. Mm. Tammy, you'll love this one. Comporta, Portugal. Yeah, I don't know where that is, but I love, love Portugal. See, I think my parents would like this. It's for beach lovers, bird watching enthusiasts, which is huge. But also families who are looking for a fun and relaxing vacation. Portugal's not super uh, expensive either. It really, it, it's going to get expensive because people are discovering it, but get there before it's ruined by tourism. Yeah. Uh, Busan, South Korea. That's the one I yeah. couldn't think of. Oh, I knew Busan. it was a B, a B word, Busan. Uh, San Sebastián, oh, Spain. My oldest son went there a few years ago, loved it. I think it's one of his favorite places. It's a big foodie area, the northern part of Spain. The pictures are yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, the city suited for gourmands, culture enthusiasts, food. outdoor adventure lovers. I've yeah. never heard of gourmands being a f food. Yeah. I mean, the pictures are gorgeous. Uh, you said Morocco earlier. Marrakesh. This is Marrakesh. This is number 12. Uh, looks very, um, very cultural, very do, unique. Do you know you can do a day trip from Spain to Morocco? It's a very short trip over the Straits of Gibraltar to uh, Morocco. Great places for cruises. Now it's not like the, it's not like um, the Cozumel or Nassau uh, <laughs> cruise places, but the unique cruise places all over there that are, that are neat places. Okay. You'll like this next one. Estonia. Uh, I've been oh. there. Love that place. Tallinn. Tallinn. Tal oh, I should have known that. Yeah. Tallinn, Tallinn. Estonia. Uh, it's a cruise port. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, I took a, a ferry, like a big ferry, from That's Tallinn to Helsinki. Uh, UNESCO World Heritage, um, the Old Town area. It's it's very cool. I just had some travelers go there. Great food, fascinating history, access to the sea, and lots of nature. Yeah. yeah. I've been to this next one this past year. Love it. Bergen, Norway. Never been there. <laughs> no response. <laughs> But, all right, so it is like what you, what you can't tell this picture. Um, what they're known for is the UNESCO site, these old fish houses that used to be on um, piers. And if you see them, everyone will know them because that's what you see in textbooks and stuff. Great fishing town, beautiful area. I spent a lot of time in the fish markets, which uh, Tamara, you would hate. But uh, the fresh, I don't even like salmon, but you're eating it fresh, raw, and steamed, or um, smoked. It's so good. Yeah. Mm. Uh, cool town, um, a little touristy. Yeah. And then Don't you hate that when a town's ruined by tourism? A lot of tourism. Um, yeah. And then the interesting, this really, I don't even know if I should share this. So there's a McDonald's that's very unique, not far from the fish market. And everyone there in Bergen um, calls it the um, uh, President Clinton McDonald's. Because I guess he was there and they had like a big cultural meal. And afterwards... A cultural McDonald's meal? He was spotted at McDonald's. Yeah, the <laughs> he didn't like the salmon, I guess. I don't know. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't know French... French show, South Africa. I don't know that, but I know I've heard a lot of people saying South Africa should be on everyone's mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. okay. Big in wineries that South Africa. 
And if you went through a safari, that it's a good uh, starting point. Yeah. I feel like you can do a lot there. The nature from the safaris, big city kind of feel, beaches. Um, very, there are a couple of rare, hard to find cruises that'll stop down there. But I mean, it's supposed. To, I think that's gonna be a popular place. There's some good luxury hotels too. In uh, how, how, that's a long flight though, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worth it. Okay, twenty one French Polynesia. I've been doing a lot of training on um, Windstar Cruises, going on one in a couple weeks, and they specialize in French Polynesia. Mm. So, you know, there's hundreds of islands, and they go to different islands, you get immersed in them. Now, I've watched video training, and it just, it can't be touristy, because it just, these are just small towns. That I mean, you're just really getting immersed in the you know, nature and stuff. is not a lot to do. I mean, tourism is probably their industry, though. What else would they do? No, they just exist there. I mean, there's, there's not many ships that go over there. You know what I mean? So... I mean, these are just little towns that... You're just invading their towns when you go. It somewhere. looks like that with the <laughs> training because, I mean, yeah, there's going to be one or two big, you know, big, big ports and stuff. But, um, but a lot of these little ones are just, you know, little fishing towns or little, um, you know, the Fremont. With McDonald's there? No. I mean, these are not that kind of towns. It, it, it's, it's interesting. This is not a surprising one, although I, I don't think we've ever booked anyone there. Easter Island, Chile. Yeah. <laughs> it's those statues. I'm sure Chris is here. And then I'm going to end with number 23, Finland, because we have sent people there to Finland. Yeah. I like, nice. I like Finland. I don't lot. know much about Finland. I what, really like it. What do you do over there? It's very, like, a very um, health oriented place. Even in the wintertime, they're outside doing active adventure type of stuff. But <laughs> it's a European town, so it still has that European charm. I like the shopping in Finland. There's. Quick. You say that everywhere, though. You go shopping everywhere. You have to buy an extra suitcase to bring home all the stuff. Not in Finland. I should have, though. It, it, it's a great place. They have a they have a candy factory called uh, Bazer, which I love, and you can take a tour of it. And they make the oh. best candy I've ever had, which is called Dime. I, I'm seeing I Love Lucy. Were you yeah. there kind of shoving <laughs> the stuff in yourself? No, 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 no. Okay. No. But well, that sounds like a great trip. Yeah. yeah. So lots of uh, unique places. Things we so, didn't know. <laughs> Christy came up with today's title, so <laughs> even though we've done episodes before. Full disclosure. No, don't ruin the behind the scenes. That's a whole other episode. Behind the scenes of our, our, of our, of our award-winning show. Yes. So let's focus. Uh, this is Did You Know Part 5, I believe. We've done so many of these. And um, Christy, you share your knowledge so often with us. Um, a wealth and fountain of knowledge, not just on geography, but on everything. <laughs> So I know you've got a couple, did you know about your areas of specialty, whether it's all inclusive, domestic, share with all of us, all of our many viewers right now. He's a nice guy on there. Okay. What, what's a did you know? Did so you know? my did you know You're going to multiple ones though. Um, no, I only have. Well, you better start thinking of two or three more. No, I only have one did you know. So, um, yes, yeah, as Michael said, I do a lot of beachy, fun, Caribbean, domestic uh, trips. But I also can book your family's getaway VRBO Airbnb type properties. Uh, we were just in one last week in uh, Cascade Falls, Colorado, which was amazing and beautiful. And anybody who has booked a house for their family um, or friends knows that it takes a lot of research. You've got to check location. You need to know um, reviews. I mean, those are huge. So there, you know, there can be a lot of steps that are involved in booking um, a getaway house for family or friends. So that is something I can do. And you will not pay more to do it with, um, to have me book it than you would on your own. I have access to great uh, lake house properties, beach house, um, in the mountains, uh, cities, apartments, you know, Chicago. I was looking for somebody for one in Chicago, an apartment. Um, and I can find the best locations for you to make sure it's near transportation or restaurants or walking distance. Um, so then you can also, if you really want to go high budget, you can go up to villas that are both could be in the Caribbean, could be in Mexico. Um, you could have a private chef. So there's a wide range um, of properties that are out there. And so I have been doing quite a few of them since I started um, and have had great um, luck, I don't want to say luck, but great success with um, matching families up with good properties. And um, so that's my did you know, it's not just all inclusives, but um, 
but those types of getaways that you think maybe, oh my gosh, I got to sit down. I got to take a look. Let me take a look at for it and let me send you the options and then I can book them for you. You know, I, I've been to two or three with like groups of people and yeah. someone else always did the work and I looked yeah. once and I think it is a little it intimidating because yeah. the locations is the scary thing. Yeah. And then I feel like it's a gamble. You never know what you're going to yeah. show up to. I mean, yeah. So I, you know, I think that's part of the research and that's part of, you know, taking up your time where just call me and say, this is what we're looking for. We really want a pool walking distance to the beach, but we also want to, you know, there's a lot of beach towns that have um, areas to walk to for food and for shopping. So maybe you don't need to rent a car even, um, or if you're driving somewhere, we've had great success with families. Um, uh, a large family had a house on a lake house, a lake house in Michigan and absolutely loved it. And like I said, where we were last week was beautiful, great location. Um, you know, they had a lot of amenities and a lot of extra added things that you don't know about, but let me kind of figure that out for you. We can take it a step further too. <clears throat> and uh, in Europe, we can find yes, amazing yeah. properties. I found a villa. You did, yeah. Yeah, in Venice on the Grand Canal for a family. Uh, I think there maybe were seven or eight of them traveling together. They had three bedrooms. You could, you could sit on a terrace and watch the boats go up and down the Grand Canal, which is fun to do. Um, but all throughout Europe, there are castle properties and villas in Tuscany and in the south of France that maybe sleep 20 people and you could rent a place for a week with a pool, the kids mm -hmm. can run around. And then if you do have a car, you can do little mm -hmm. day trip excursions out into other areas. To me, that sounds like a um, just a very relaxing, yeah. fun trip. And when you start breaking it out per person, a lot of times oh, those places yeah. are so much cheaper. Absolutely. And, you're, and we can also, as Christy mentioned, add chefs or get a private photographer right. or have groceries there when you arrive. There's all sorts of amenities we can include or, or reach out to some of our contacts to find for you so that you just have an easy, seamless vacation. And such a range. So if you just want to yeah. get together with family and not spend a fortune, you know, you can do that for a few nights. Heck, I've even looked at places that were close enough to an airport so families could Uber, mm -hmm. and then they had little shops and restaurants and bars within walking distance from where they were mm -hmm. staying. Yeah. So they didn't need to rent a car. But so you have this range of, you know, just a getaway, spend time together, make memories to, you know, amazing villas yeah. and properties in Europe and in the Caribbean where you can make right. memories as well. Like a restored castle, I think. Yeah. And there's quite a few of them you can find scattered throughout Europe. That Yeah, it's a really cool option, I yeah. think. Yeah, even like if you're, if you, I know somebody getting married and they want to get married in Europe yep. and they uh, are looking for a property like that mm -hmm. to uh, to have their event. So, yeah. So that's, that's a good deal, you know, yeah. So can, uh, like, uh, you know, I travel alone a lot. So is it, can you get Airbnbs for one person? I oh, mean, absolutely. Absolutely. Is, is it tend to be cheaper or the same as a regular hotel? You know, what I found is, um, you know, it depends. And it depends what you're looking for. So, you know, we were talking about this because we cooked Thanksgiving dinner. We had breakfast. We, um, you know, had privacy. We had a hot tub. You know, a lot of things that, you know, we were looking for. But there's also, we went to the Broadmoor. Um, in Colorado Springs, which is an amazing hotel. And we thought, we talked, you know, should, should, should we have stayed here? Or should we stay here next time? So I guess it depends what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you want to do, if you want to grocery shop and do those meals and take, well, send you, yeah. So I would not as a single stay in a, in a place like that. Uh, uh, we I never have. That's why I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, no, yeah. I, as I, I travel single too. And I like the security of having a, a hotel and I like the service too. Exactly. So that's, it, you, yeah, it would be two different types yeah. of, um, I think you'd you know, probably pay, priorities. as a single traveler, you're probably going to pay about the same yeah. as staying in a hotel. But I feel like a hotel has more things a single traveler needs. Yeah. Security being the room point. service. You know, I yeah. sometimes get well, the exactly. munchies at 11 o'clock exactly. and I, exactly. So, well, sometimes right. I need to work and I just don't have time to go out. And so I'll order room service too. That's, yeah. Uh, bachelor bachelorette parties. A good oh, way perfect. To travel. Perfect. Yes, I did a couple of those. I I had one this summer where the bride they had a wonderful time. And here's the thing, she um had some people flying in. She was driving in and bringing a dog. So I needed to find a property that was drivable for her within you know she didn't want to be driving for 15 hours, um close to an airport, and it was pet friendly. 
So I was able to find one on the beach for her and her friends and they had an amazing time. So those are the kind of things that I think, you know, let us handle, let me, let me look at that for you. Let me see what we can work, send you a couple options, yay or nay. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's much easier. And who doesn't love working with our Chrissy on those right. kind of trips? You know, right. you're good at finding those. I am, and I enjoy it. I, yeah. I, I like doing it. So, yeah. Wonderful. Well, we'll accept that as you do. Thank you know, you. And we'll leave it just one. That's Thank fine. You. Okay. I appreciate it. Now, Tamara, I know you have two. So. Do I? You know, we have these production meetings. We do. Where we, we have the big planning, <laughs> trying on the race computer. for Wait, what? Wait, timelines, what? <laughs> mapping out agendas, flow charts, preparing for these episodes. And yeah. I think it's just me, you know, and you guys don't listen. That's yeah, true. Typical relationship. Yeah. The woman just doesn't listen. Yeah. Right, right, right. So How many times do you say something to me and I'm like, what is that? He's Chrissy like, really doesn't pay attention. Weren't you? <laughs> no. Hey, TikTok isn't going to watch itself, <laughs> oh okay? Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> or Facebook. <Right. laughs> They're awful. Awfully good. I'm always and off the right. Just so everybody knows, I am constantly picked on by these two. Especially In a loving environment. Right, right. So, all right. So, Tamara, uh, traveling in Europe, yeah. okay, I think we, we tend to think of uh, you're either going to do like a tour, like with a company, like a Trafalgar and a group, you know, mm -hmm. or you kind of think of like uh, two people or a group of people just going to... Dropped. Somehow map it out. To be <laughs> show up. Godspeed. You know, and then they're gonna be like, Tamara, you know, so uh help us understand, share some insider knowledge, give your do you know. Okay. So uh so you're right. We I do hear from people sometimes. I wanna go, let's let's use Italy because that's the most popular word. I wanna do Italy. So what does that mean to you? It doesn't mean just sh showing up. To, in Rome and then figuring it out from that point on. I think some do, people try. Do you yeah. think people do that? And it's a lot of money just to hope for yeah, the best. Yeah. It's like Russian roulette. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, it's not the best way to do Italy. And I, I really don't like that term, do Italy, because you can attack it a million different ways and you're never really done experiencing a place. There's always more to learn and explore. So I guess my do you know is we can we have access to all sorts of connections that can really enhance your trip and make your trip flow seamlessly with people who are very knowledgeable and know the ins and outs of a place so did you know we can hire private drivers for you or private guides people who will pick you up at the airport or the train station or wherever and get you to your yeah. destination you don't have to worry about any of those details you really can just show up, but you need to have some planning done in advance so that you have the best, um, the best time ever. We, I, I, we've traveled many times in, in Europe and we used to do it without a guide. I used to think I can do it all on my own. You know, I can read the books and I can figure it all out. Which she I has all the like books. Do. <laughs> I really do like to we do it. have a library. <laughs> but I know for my personal travel that my experience is so much better, like infinitely better when you actually have somebody who can lead you through that destination. You save time. In the long run, I think you save money and you save a ton of stress. We have had... Um, stressful moments just trying to find a parking spot or trying to figure out directions when we're driving or a ton like figuring out a restaurant without without the expert guide in our back pocket to help us out it, it can get very stressful so I think that's my my well and then can't know. you see like areas that other people may not know about because they're yes, locals for I know sure you mentioned okay so here's a good example I was just in Rome last week and um <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> well, she drove last week. So we had a we had a private driver guide, which I think I talked to last week about how wonderful that was. But he took us to this little spot, which was like a hidden spot, um, but there was a giant line there, so uh, it's not so hidden anymore. But what it is is it the Knights of Malta have a door. And there's a keyhole, and if you look through the keyhole, oh, it's yeah, a it's you know do you know what I'm yeah, talking about? Yeah, it's a Mount perfectly Mountain. framed view of uh, St. Peter's Basilica, and he showed us a picture because we weren't going to wait in line for it. But it it was really cool. That's like one of those little hidden spots that um, more people know about, but I I really had never heard of it before. My my colleague who was with us uh, had heard of it. But, you know, all day long, he was picking out little things to show us how to use a water fountain in Rome because there's public water fountains all over the place. Yeah, I have a great video of getting squirted in the face. 
<laughs> by that's good those. water though. It's it straight from water. straight from the ground. It's, yeah, yeah, and they're all over Rome. Like, and I would have thought, oh, those are, look at those cute little dog drinking fountains. That's not what they are. Oh. <laughs> that's not what they are. <laughs> so, but having a guide no. just enhances your trip. Now, a guide having uh, hiring a private guide and a driver can be a little pricey sometimes. I, I personally think it's worth the investment. But there are other ways to do it that are not as um, expensive. So you can take a guided motor coach tour, and we have access to you know hundreds and hun maybe thousands of different tours that will give you an overview. You're not going to have the the in depth personalized attention, but you're going to get a nice overview of things. So like if it was your first trip to Europe, so if you're feeling like you know I really want to go to Europe, but it may be overwhelming. I've never been. I'm a little overwhelmed yeah. by it. I think there's a lot to see and do, but I also know that we've sent some people on some wonderful trips that kind of highlight certain areas. Yeah. And then once you get that kind of maybe you feel a little comfortable, maybe the next time you'll yeah. branch out a little bit more. Right. So. Yeah, it can be overwhelming because there is a lot to learn about going there. You just just getting out of the airport can be a little challenging, but that's where we come in yeah. and we're your partner in getting through all of that. And we we can we have those conversations and we try to find that right fit for you. So if you are just interested in an overview of many different places, we've got the right fit. If you want to really dig into a culture, we've got the right fit for that too and the right resources. So yeah. I guess my do you know is we we can partner with a lot of people to help really make Take your, the stress away. Yeah, yeah. make yeah. your vacation yeah. Yeah, just the best ever. So, did I answer what I was supposed to No, answer? I thought that was good. I think it's good uh, to hear, I think Chrissy's, you know, knows nothing over there. You know, saying that you need, <laughs> it's, it's overwhelming. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I mean, I think that's where a lot of people fall. I mean, that it, it yeah. can be scary. And like, the I get overwhelmed by the train system over there. And I, I know it's easy and I've done it with people. But like on your own, it's a little, it's a, it's a it, little. Yeah, I agree. I made rookie mistakes with that yeah. system too. You get a ticket that has your car number and your seat number, and you have to know where to look on the car to know what car it is, and they're not sequential at all. <laughs> so it could, you could go car two, nine, eleven in order, and then you have to figure out where your seat is too. And it's oh, by the way, it's not in English, so you that can be kind of. Uh, yeah. Challenging, but I like when I do it. I highlight all that for my passengers, for my clients, and let them know how to find nice. it. Nice, but yeah. yeah, wonderful. That's a good. Do you know? I think yeah, and I think actually you covered both things we talked about in that okay. one. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Gold star, ladies, gold star. Okay, so when I got into this, you know, I, I'll my do you know? I think if you hear of chartering a boat in Europe. I think you think of like a, what's that 007? James Bond. James Bond. Or you yes. think of like Bezos, mm -hmm. you know, the the yeah. Amazon guy. Mm -hmm. Or you think of like these these mega yachts that are, you know, a million yes. dollars a night, yeah. right? But did you know that there are other options for us people that can't afford that? <laughs> <laughs> and I think are awesome vacations, no matter if you're going uh, by yourself, whether you're going to go with your family or a group of friends. So the there you could do these all over the world. Tamara's talked about La Boat a lot, which is a great river kind of boat version of that. But there's also the ocean or sea kind of versions of that too. Not with the boat, you're not captaining yourself, but that are small, small yacht-like boats. So the hot places right now are Croatia. Croatia. Which a lot of people think, Croatia? And I kind of thought, why the heck would I want to go to Croatia? When you see the videos, you see the pictures, <laughs> you're like, I need to go to Croatia. Yeah, Why yeah, am I? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to live there. I yeah. mean, it's it's the islands. It's these walled cities. These cool, cool little places that you just walk around. There's food and shop. It's it's almost what a lot of people imagine Europe to be is well, is Croatia. It's a great alternative to Italy. It's right across the the yeah the little sea there. Yeah, Adriatic. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think I think when you think of if you're not thinking of the Colosseum or the the Eiffel Tower, when you, people think of they think of Europe. It's these quaint little cobblestone towns that's easy to walk around. People are like, you know, everyone knows each other. Great food. That's these Croatian places. Mm -hmm. And I and, and and so these little small charter boats, um, usually I think you can get for, they start at maybe eight cabins. So eight cabins, 16 people. And they could start off as low as a little bit around 2,000 euros a person. Wow. So it, it's actually. For a week. For a week, yeah. So oh it could gosh. actually be less than one of the big ships, and um, did what, they have a crew on board? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, not huge because you're talking, right. you know, but it, it, it goes the gamut. Yeah, like, you, you can, can go all full and high, and, yeah. Or you can have luxury. Yeah, wow. and you can get you those Bezos ships, but, you know, this is this basic yeah. ones for, you know, 16 people and up. Here's what I like. Here, I know that's a good thumbs up because I like this because it flips up your whole, it's a whole different way to vacation. So think about this. You wake up, you have breakfast on board, beautiful sunny day, you're on the water. You're in like um, a, co a cove with yeah. mountains in like an exotic place that looks like a scene from a 007 James jumping Bond movie. The, jumping off the bush. And what do you do in the morning? You take a little dip and you have the morning to kind of hang out, float in the water, paddleboard kayak. All these kind of fun things. You're like, I'm doing this in the Mediterranean. And then... With my family. <laughs> yeah, with your family or your group of friends. Yeah. That could be fun. And you have the drinks there. You know, whatever you want. Whether you want a daiquiri or just a water or a Coke or whatever it is. And you're chilling, wow. having like an ideal vacation, like a dream vacation. It's like a good life moment. It is. Because yeah. you don't think oh, we could awesome. afford is, that. Right. Yet we could afford we that. Can. We, we can. We actually can. So... <laughs> It, I feel like a politician. You can. <laughs> we can. There's hope. And so then in the afternoon, you know, you have lunch on board, fresh, freshly prepared, good food. Then in the afternoon, two or three o'clock, you dock in this little quaint little town that looks like a postcard and you just do whatever the heck you want to do. Now you can do an excursion that we can book for you. They can book for you. That's, you know, overview tour. You can do experiences, cooking classes, food winery tours, visits. winery visits. Yeah. Um, because you're in a small thing, like the captain of the boat, who you become good friends with, can say, here's my favorite two bars. Let's, I'll go with you. Yeah. And uh, the one captain, Philip, I became friends with, he does that with the people. You yeah. know, if it's a fun group, he says, oh, yeah, I'll take them out. We'll go to my favorite bars and restaurants, and we'll just hang out. Oh, and then fun. you just chill in that town. Now, you have yeah. dinner in the town mm -hmm. um, or wherever you're at. So you're getting that immersive experience. It's not expensive at all. Mm -mm. In the town, doing that bar hopping or yeah, restaurants or yeah. winery, whatever it is, it's not that expensive. And then the cruise isn't expensive. So it's like you're living like a billionaire yeah. um, on a budget. Now, again, like Tamara pointed out, we can get you those big ones. Fun on a budget. But, I mean, starting with 16, you know, eight cabins, you, you know, there's 12 yeah. cabin ones, there's 16 cabins, lots of different options. Um, I mentioned Croatia. Uh, the Greek Isles are really popular. Um, obviously, you know, everyone wants to go to Santorini Roads, all those Mykonos kind of places. Um, big, wow. even in the Caribbean, they have that. I kind of think, nice. uh, let, let's look at the Europe ones, because I think those are yeah. a little bit unique. But Croatia's got the biggest fleet right now. But I have to say, I'm noticing a huge tourism push in Croatia. They're throwing a lot of money at, towards tourism. So go to Croatia before it becomes over-touristed. Yeah. Like the next five years. If that's something on your bucket list get there and what i kind of liked is that um if you do that and you can join a small group mm -hmm. or you can bring your own group and you can really kind of talk through what the mm -hmm. as long as you start and end in the same place they, they don't really care so yeah. if you say hey we got a bunch of winos and we want to see as many cool wineries mm -hmm. those captain captain philip and his dad who's the captain of the other ship for that little company they know all those places oh, and then they will custom yeah you know as long as you're back yeah. when you gotta be back yeah yeah That's awesome you can do barge Cruises like that in uh, in Europe, in um, like England and uh, United Kingdom. Yeah, they got those all over. Where you can charter a, a barge and then, which are they're very nice, and then go through canals and rivers. So, yeah, yeah. A lot of, all over Europe. A lot of options. But I kind of like these small boat chartering. That that yeah. sounds amazing. You think it's going to be a fortune, but really, it's yeah. not. It's no, when just... you start adding up the cost of food and wine and experiences and transportation. And lodging, it's all it's kind of like an all-included package yeah. without your airfare. Yeah. And a little bit of extra stuff. There's extra fees for things, but it's it's a great way to travel, I think. And I, I think you get the best of all kinds of travel because you got mm -hmm. the relaxation, you got the ex, the experiences, you got the small towns, you're, mm -hmm. you're in the med on a private yeah. boat. I mean, and I you have a personal <laughs> guide there who can answer questions and lead you through it. You've got like that assistance that... You don't get it if you're doing it on your own. You it doesn't crew. say, like, rent me on the side, does no. it? No. Okay. No. You don't like RVs, do you? <laughs> okay. There's, there's there's I'm not even going to respond to that. <laughs> I'm just making sure that, you know, you're not, like, yeah. sticking out, pulling in everywhere. Yeah. No. <laughs>
Well, did you know? That's why you rely on us because we know the the actual safe, beautiful yes. boats that don't have the ones on the moves, side. Not the ramping ones. ones. Yeah. I mean, you can find one of those. I don't know what you're gonna get on board. What kind of board entertainment you get? Some of them have those water toys they throw out, like you see on below deck, which I think is kind of cool. Like or like the out. trampoline things, yeah, in the bouncy mm -hmm. things in the water. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds yeah. amazing. Or they, if you have like a more luxury one, they can bring entertainment on board in the evening wow. and all sorts of fun things. And just with the people you love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or and anyone charter. that invites Or tolerate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Or like that. laughs> <I'm kidding>. Yay! <laughs> I'll bum around. No, that sounds great. All right, so lots of did you knows. Uh, anything else, ladies, that you want to add? Did you know? Oh, I'm sure there's a million of them, yeah. but I think we've covered them. Yeah. A lot to think about, a lot to consider. If any of these trips sound amazing to you or something like you'd like to take advantage of, connect with our team and we can start working on that. So yeah. yes. let's transition to everyone's favorite segment, uh, TGLT updates. Uh, Chrissy, you got any interesting bookings or any news in your uh, niche? Um, Let's see. I've, I've been booking... Um, just a lot of beautiful, beautiful getaways, some spring break. Um, I booked last week this young couple who haven't been away from their kids yet. So they booked a beautiful oh, resort in Cabo. Oh my gosh, Ooh. it's gorgeous. Um, just Christmas gifts and uh, spring breaks. Uh, my spring break group is hopping. So yeah, just busy. That's wonderful to hear. Yes. Tamara, yes. any uh, interesting bookings or any news mm. in your industry? Tammy has one. Well, I have a, a great booking to Ireland, but, um, I mean, you know, we just keep doing the same thing we do, book great vacations for people around the world. But I, uh, a couple of things I'm working on, um, becoming a CTA certified travel advisor, which is a, a, a big, um, course and I have to take a test at the end. So with geography, I hear. <laughs> yeah, I love geography. Is geography so. in it? Yes, I that's a big I'll part never, of it. I'll never be one. So I'm uh, <laughs> trying to attack that right now. I have a year to finish it. Uh, I'm down to maybe seven months now to finish it. So uh, we didn't get your first day of school pictures. I know. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to do that? We do lunch back to back. Yeah. Oh, we should. We'll get yeah. you a cap and gown, and we'll yeah. stand outside. You can hold your certificate. But once I finish it, you guys are up next to, to do those things. So we're here. To I'm working on my clear certification. Your CLIA certification? Yeah, ACC. Good. That's the largest trade organization, CLIA. In the okay. World. But what does that get you? It just means that you're an expert in your field. Oh. I'm already an expert <laughs> in my field. Which field are we talking about? <laughs> so, all right. I'll get us back on the train wagon here. Uh, lots of bookings, like everyone said, going on. I just booked a couple Alaska yesterday, yeah. and I will say there's not a lot of Alaska left. Oh, I'm really surprised. So... Our space is kind of taken, except for the um, August one. So if you're thinking a round trip out of Seattle, which is a great introduction to Alaska, which is actually a very easy way to travel because it's in and out of one port, so it makes air easier. Um, it's also a beautiful ship, one of the new ones, award-winning with Forbes and all that good stuff. So um, there's still some room there. Um, not much room left on those one ways. So if you're thinking of doing land as a part of it, uh, yeah, maybe on the inside of the boat. Rowing mm. is part of it. <laughs> so that Alaska one, you don't need a passport, correct? You do have to have a passport oh, because you do. you do stop in Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was just... Yeah, now clo like, um, closed loops like that in, out of uh, Florida, a lot of times you don't need one, mm -hmm. although we always recommend it. But um, there you, you would need it because okay. Canada requires it. Okay, can I make my annual uh, appeal yes. to get a passport? We are due for that. This is yeah. a good Christmas, Christmas gift, gift idea. idea. Did you know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's time, if you don't have a passport... Apply for your passport. There, it, it's the time to get one is getting less and less, but um, it still takes a little bit of time. So uh, apply. It's, it does make a really good Christmas gift, especially if you've got kids, because yeah. it really opens the world up to them. So get your passport. You know, I get go to the passport. I get I go to the post office a lot to sit, mail our stuff out, and there's always someone there getting a passport. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. a lot of people are are getting it. I tried to leave my business cards there, but the government employees would not allow it for all those travelers. Can you these with each application? Yeah. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but a lot of people are getting them, but I think, you know, even more need to get them because yeah. it does open doors, like you've said. Yeah. And even though there are ways to travel without one, like on certain cruises, I still think if you're going to be in a foreign country... You may not need it for the cruise. You still want that passport in case something were to happen. Yeah. And check your dates on your passport because, as we've discussed before, it doesn't expire when you think what the date is on your passport. Many countries require that you have um, at least six months validity left from the day you return. 
So keep your eye on that expiration date. I just looked at my kids and I have to get his passport renewed because he's He's an close. adult. He can do that. No, I mean, he needs to get it renewed, but he only had it for, kids are only for five years. So oh. his five years, it's really, it's really four years, but he's, you know, yeah. he, it takes six months maybe, or three months maybe to get it renewed and he'd have to have at least six months left to travel. So, well, that's a great segue to uh, upcoming travels. Tamara, you're heading out soon. Yeah, but you're heading out before me. Well, I was going to go you first. You know, we okay. got to go this way, and Chrissy's, you know, staying home. So where are you? I just got back. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to head to Spain in a few weeks for... Um, Spain. Yeah. I think we're going to be in the same city on the same day. We oh did figure gosh, out we're overlapping. Yeah. <laughs> so it. we're trying to do uh, an excursion. a guided tour together that day. And then... Uh, in early January, I'm going to head to Paris for a little bit to uh, look at me. I'm going to really attack some of the museums. I have not spent time in the museums in Paris and it's winter time, so we won't be outside that much. But um, yeah, I really want to do the museums. And I also discovered that, uh, so in France, the government kind of legislates when stores can have sales. They can have sales twice a year. I've never even heard of that. That's yeah. crazy. And the winter sale time is while I'm going to be there. Ooh. So you better okay, bring I three to... suitcases then. Yeah, I, don't, I think I was planning on taking just a carry on, but we may have to rethink that um that plan. Oh but yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So early January, there's like two weeks that they can the stores can have sales. Maybe I'll go somewhere early January warm. Didn't don't you have a fam offer recently? No, I have two free rooms at Valentin. Girl, two free you nights. Get out there. I know. Uh, lots yeah. of resorts that uh, you need to learn about. Yeah. That's good. Someone just put an angry sign up, face up, but that's okay. <laughs> we can get you a trip too. Just connect with us. <laughs> So uh, I'm, I'm heading out. Face. I'm heading out today, as Tamara mentioned. I'm going to go to a, a river cruise. You know, we sell a lot of river cruises. Great experiences um, in the same area as Tamara was. I think most of the similar ports. I think. Yeah. Starting ending different places. Uh, I'm going to river cruise, and then I've got um, there was a Windstar cruise we've talked about. I've done training. These are small boats, about 350, 360 guests on these these ships, and they're a premium plus level, premium plus luxury a little bit. There's a, a whole marketing one that was originally supposed to be in the Holy Land, but it got canceled because of all the uh, stuff going on there. And so that boat got repositioned to the Med, and it's doing Italy to uh, Barcelona, back and forth. And there's a number of stops in there. So there's this is a marketing one that's going to take over there. So there'll be conferences, talks, some influencers. Um, I think some of the excursions that we're going to do as a group, and they're going to show you how to attack excursions from a TA marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. So what you should be looking for, how to market these excursions as, as a part of the trip, because obviously you don't just go for ships, even if these big mega ships, you're going for these destinations too when you do cruising, you know, that's a both ends. So um, looking forward to that. So you'll see lots of pictures on my um, Cruising with Michael page and one or two may sneak its way onto the main page too. So follow along. I'm sure they will. <laughs> this is... This is the hostile work environment I oh work with. Oh my gosh. I need to talk to HR. <laughs> you are HR. Hello, HR. <laughs> Chrissy's being mean again. <laughs> She's the bully at work. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anything else, ladies, you want to add before we wrap this up? Nope. Nope. Well, we certainly want to thank everyone for watching this week's episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. We have a crazy work schedule, travel schedule next few weeks. So, some episodes will be taped. Mm -hmm. So, stay tuned. Follow along as always at TGL Travel. And whether it's social media, whether it's YouTube, whatever it is, follow along, like, share, comment, invite, all that good stuff. And as always, if any of these trips sound good to you, you want to jump on any of these, or if you have something in your own mind, uh, here's the team that's going to help you. So connect with us, and we will help you get there and experience the good life. So thank you everyone for watching. Have thank a great you. week. Bye. Bye.